Hi guys, welcome to Locating Genes, Genetic Screening and Counseling. So what we need to be able to do, we need to describe what DNA probes are and explain how they work, explain how DNA hybridization is used to locate specific alias of genes, describe the use of labeled DNA probes to screen for uh, heritable conditions or health, uh, health risks, and consider the use of genetic screening in genetic consultant. So in terms of the specification, uh, the main aspect of this is to, of course, understand how the DNA probes are working. And then in terms of the uh, information provided, you can then evaluate the use of those in the specific occasions. So what is a DNA probe? DNA probes are simple, short, and single-stranded sections of DNA, okay? So what do they do? They will bind to complementary sections of all the DNA strands, and due to being labeled in some way, they can be easily identified. So we've got two uh, common probes. We've got radioactively labeled probes, okay? So if they bind to uh, DNA, sample they are going to be identified on the uh, on the uh, 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 using the um, x-ray film and we also got the fluorescent uh, label props so they if they bind to dna of our interest they are going to glow so those two props are common and they've got a really good use in the medicine so let's have a look how we can then use them and what they are. So radioactively labeled props, of course, uh, what we've mentioned, we can detect them using X-ray film. And they are made of isotopes of uh, 32P. And in terms of the fluorescently labeled props, they will eliminate light, so fluorescence under certain conditions okay so when they bound to our targeted dna they will uh, uh, emit this light and we can detect those using uv light okay so one more time what we're saying probes are single stranded short uh, fragments of dna could be rna as well and they can bind to our target dna strand right so let's have a look how it works so this is our uh, mutated mutated gene okay so how we can use the probe then we can uh, we can use it to identify if the person has a genetic disorder so knowing that this is the mutation the sequence of the mutated gene we can then produce the complementary dna probe okay to the uh, to that mutated gene. So this prop here that we've produced can be either uh, fluorescently labeled or could be uh, could be radioactively labeled uh, prop. It doesn't matter. Okay. So uh, firstly, one more time, you've got a mutated gene. Knowing the sequence of the mutated gene, you can then produce the complementary sequence. Uh, that would be used as our prop and then we need to label this prop so we can label it by fluorescent uh, or we can uh, label it uh, make it a radioactive uh, prop so what we do then later on the sequence of the props we are going to copy so we're going to make lots and lots of copies of this DNA prop using PCR technique. So there is a, a separated video for PCR technique. You can uh, you can watch this if you're not aware of PCR yet. So we've made, imagine we've made lots of copies of this single-stranded DNA prop and now this prop can be used to, uh, to identify if the person carries the genetic disorder or not, okay? So, of course, this single-stranded prop of DNA is going to bind to the mutated sequence of the, uh, of the gene. So, remember, that was our mutated gene. Same is here now. 
but what uh, what do we need to do we need to make sure that uh, that person's dna has been separated okay because we we of course want to uh, anneal our uh, our prop so if the donor has the mutated gene some donor dna fragments will have a base sequence that is complementary to that prop so that's the mutated sequence and that's the prop so they being complementary they will bind so how we can then identify them in this situation okay of course by uh, by using uh, the uh, the uh, difluorescence because we've used the fluorescent label uh, prop but to make sure that we only got our props bind to this mutated dna we need to uh, wash clean that dna of any unattached props so it's only going to give us this positive result if the complementary fragment is present if the complementary fragment is not present then the dna pr uh, prop is not going to fluoresce so any remaining hybridized dna will be detected okay so that's everything for dna props see you later